It's easy to recognize those big red flags that are clearly waving in your face when you're dating, like signs of verbal abuse, emotional, physical, sexual abuse. Those are the big, big ones. But what about the less obvious red flags? In today's video, I am going to share the more subtle red flags that could save you from heartache and pain if you recognize them early on in the dating process. So first let's just discuss why we tend to ignore these less obvious, more silent red flags. Number one, they're not very obvious during the early days of dating. It's easy to overlook them. The person is intentionally hiding their true self in the early stages of dating. That's another reason why. The third reason is we see our date through rose-colored glasses if we're infatuated in the early stages. We don't trust our own intuition and judgment because we've been told we were wrong our whole lives, so we don't trust ourselves. Number six, we're afraid of calling the other person out. We don't really trust that we have the right words to ask the right questions. It's something I teach in my coaching practice because it is such an important part of dating. We have poor boundaries or low self-esteem. So if you are a person who has never really established boundaries with yourself or with other people, this is one of the reasons that we can ignore red flags. We can sometimes just believe this is as good as it gets. And so there may be those subtle red flags, but you know, most of the stuff is good. And this is something I hear all the time. And the last reason is because we've been raised to minimize some of these more subtle red flags as harmless. Never mind, you're just being overly sensitive or overly reactive. And I want to say, no, that is not true. And so I'm going to share the 10 less obvious red flags. Number one, they're too busy to date you consistently. I've heard this so many times. I would love to see you. I, I like you so much. And then they don't ask you out consistently or they don't stay in touch consistently. Number two, they talk about their crazy exes a lot. And this can show up on the first phone call, the first date. Oh, my, my ex is so crazy. And the reason this is a red flag is because they're pointing fingers at the other person as having a problem. And they're also bad mouthing the other person. They're acting like a victim. They're not taking responsibility for their share. There's a lot of red flags in there. Number three, they trauma bond with you. They bring up all of their childhood trauma right away or things that have happened to them or their sicknesses or whatever it is. But bonding through trauma is a red flag because you want to bond through the good stuff, through the values that you share. Number four, they are jealous. They don't trust you. So they start checking your phone. They get very uh, paranoid when you're talking to other men, even if you're just having a conversation. They have major trust issues. And this is, this is a really big red flag that you need to be careful of. Number five, their home is a mess. And you may say, well, you know, they can always clean it. But people who have really messy homes where they have chaos, that could be one of those subtle red flags that could indicate there's a greater issue. Number six, they mismanage their money. And that can mean that they're in debt. Now, there are people who are in debt and they're paying off their debt. And that's fine because they were in debt for whatever reason, they mismanaged their money once, or they made a mistake, they made a poor investment. But if they continuously overspend, mismanage, don't save, that's a big red flag. Number seven, they flirt with other people and they deny that it means anything. So these are those big, charming, flirty types. And they're like, no, I'm with you. Pay attention. Number eight, the relationship progresses way too quickly. We can call this love bombing. We can call it whatever we want. But if somebody is trying to lock it down before you're ready and you've brought it up and you've told them that it's moving too fast and they ignore you, that's a red flag. And number nine is they don't communicate consistently. So let's say they communicate all throughout the day and then the next day they don't communicate at all or they communicate once a week. If it's inconsistent, and again, this is something to talk about and bring up, if they still can't 
really regulate their communication and it makes you feel dysregulated, then that's a red flag. And number 10, they lack emotional intimacy. A lot of times people will share their stories, they'll share the trauma bonding, they'll share things and it'll look like they're really bonding with you. They'll be interested sexually. There's a lot of things that they'll show that look like interest, that look like bonding, but they don't talk about hard things. They don't have the ability to really get close and be vulnerable in the ways that really build intimacy. So have you ever overlooked any of these more subtle, less obvious red flags? If so, you're not alone. And the good news is that knowledge is power. And the faster you recognize these signs, the better. If you do notice any of them show up early on in the dating process, like I said, talk about it, get curious and see what they say. There might be a misunderstanding. They might be willing to amend certain behaviors. If they do, then keep dating them until you see something else pop up and keep talking about stuff. But if they're in denial or make you the problem or get really defensive, it's important to walk away and know that you got out of this relationship before you got in too deep. So recognizing red flags early on is so crucial you don't want to be like only looking for red flags and never finding green flags, but you do need to be a good red flag detective. 